Thank you to Babbel for sponsoring this video. Who were the Druids? Most of our representations of Druids nowadays are in fantasy books and games. World of Warcraft, Dungeons and Dragons, and others present Druids as magical nature wizards. While that's all very fun, I think we all know intuitively that that's not an accurate representation of historical Druids. When most people think of historical druids, if they think of them at all, have one of two images in their head. One like this, a wise man with a white beard and white robe, worshipping and being in harmony with nature, doing some ancient ceremony at Stonehenge. Or a much darker image, one of dangerous human sacrifice, of heathenous barbarism and blood and gore. Well. Which of these is correct? Before we continue, here's a quick word from our sponsor, and that sponsor is Babbel. Summer is upon us, and what says summer more than going on vacation? Maybe you're planning a trip to France, or Indonesia, or South America. Well, wouldn't it be helpful to know the language of the country you're going to? Of course it would. And that's where Babbel comes in. Babbel is the premier language learning app on the market. It teaches real-world, practical conversations in easy-to-digest, 10-minute lessons. I'm using it right now to brush up on the French I learned in college. Bonjour, je suis le papier généraliste. Babel est super. How is my accent? Need some work? Yeah, well, that's no problem, because Babbel uses speech recognition software to help improve your pronunciation and accent. I know my viewers are always looking to learn new things, so whether you're planning your dream vacation, trying to connect with non-English speakers in your community, or just trying to improve yourself, why not give Babbel a try? Click the link in the description to get 65% off. Thank you again to Babbel, and now back to the video. So first off, we need some historical context. This region here is the land of the Celts, pre-Roman invasion. The Celts were an ethno-linguistic group who, during the Classical period, lived mostly in Gaul, modern-day France, and the British Isles. Celtic people still exist today, of course, residing mostly in Wales, Scotland, and Ireland. The Druids were the religious leaders of these Celtic peoples. Now the Celts were, in the heyday of Druidism, a seemingly illiterate people. At the very least, we have no writings about Druids by Druids or their followers. This raises an obvious problem. All of the historical accounts of Druids come from outside sources, mostly from Greeks and Romans, and later, medieval Irish Christians. Now, this doesn't mean that all the information given to us by these non-Druids should be overlooked. If we did that, we'd have virtually no information at all, and plenty of these ancient writings can be trusted, at least as much as any other ancient writing. Also, we now have plenty of archaeological evidence that sheds light on the lives of these Celts, and presumably the Druids as well. So modern scholars are able to match the information given in the Greco-Roman accounts and scrutinize them against the archaeological evidence. So, now that's out of the way, who were the Druids? The Druids were a social class of educated people, both men and women, who held a very respected place in pre-Roman Celtic society. They had a number of roles and responsibilities. First and foremost, they were the religious leaders of the Celts. Druids understood the spiritual beliefs and religious practices of the Celts and were the only ones believed to have the power to communicate with the gods. They also acted as judges, settling legal matters within the tribes, and as advisors to different Celtic lords. Druids were said to be well-versed in law, ethics, medicine, and philosophy. Their powers were so far-reaching that a Celtic lord would not go to war unless permitted by the local druid and there are multiple accounts of druids putting a stop to battles they thought were morally wrong. The druids were one of three non-noble groups honored in Celtic society. The other two were the Vates, whose job was to perform religious sacrifices, as well as to give prophecy. 
and the bards, who were poets, musicians, and satirists. In this video we'll be focusing on the druids. That being said, the roles of the vates, druids, and bards often overlapped, and in some sources there seemed to have been no distinction between them at all, with the druids performing all three functions. Whether this was because the writers of those sources, like Julius Caesar, yes, that Julius Caesar, were ignorant of the complexities of Celtic religious life, or because in some places and times the roles were just simpler, is not known. To understand the Druids' role in society, we have to understand a bit about Celtic paganism. Unfortunately, like the Druids themselves, the information we have about Celtic religion is incomplete. We know the Celts were polytheists, believing in a pantheon of many gods. Some of these gods were local, being gods of specific places, like mountains or rivers. And some gods were more general being gods of fertility or agriculture, for instance. Also, there seems to have been different pantheons of gods in different places. So the gods worshipped in Gaul were often not the gods worshipped in, say, Ireland. These gods were linked heavily with the natural world. In most pagan religions, the gods were thought to be above us, both in a spiritual but also in a physical sense. The gods of Greece lived on Mount Olympus, for instance. The gods of the Celts, however, were thought to be in nature, and underground, living in an underworld of sorts. Now that doesn't mean the heavens were unimportant. Greek writers like Hecateus of Abdera wrote about how the Druids were knowledgeable in astronomy, and that some Celtic people seemed to worship the moon. So, the topic of astronomy takes us to one of the most common misconceptions about druids, that they built Stonehenge. Stonehenge, one of the most famous British landmarks, is well known for lining up with several astronomical events, like the summer and winter solstices. But modern research has revealed that Stonehenge was built in around 2400 BC, which is two millennia before the druids came on the scene. It is certainly plausible that the Druids may have used Stonehenge as a sacred site, but they certainly didn't build it. The most important religious practice of the Celts was making offerings to the gods. This was done by burying valuables in the ground, in large underground stores, or by throwing valuables in sacred rivers. Archaeologists have found many stores of this sort throughout the Celtic lands, and it seems that certain places, bogs and rivers mostly, were seen as sacred. Animals were also sacrificed. These sacrifices were apparently not done by the Druids, but by the Vates. In his observations though, Diodorus Sticulus, a Greek historian, wrote that a Druid was always present at any sort of sacrifice, even if they didn't do the sacrificing. The animals were also used for divination. The Vait, after killing the animal, would observe its entrails and come up with a prophecy based on them. Now that leads to the controversial subject of human sacrifice. Many Druid enthusiasts, as well as some scholars, have argued that the Druids did not, in fact, practice human sacrifice, and any reference to such things in Greek and Roman sources were put there as anti-Druid propaganda. There is some truth in this, as many of the Roman sources on Druids were written as Rome was conquering Gaul, and painting the local Celts as savages was a good way of drumming up support for the war. All that said, there is quite a lot of evidence, both written and archaeological, that the Celts did indeed perform human sacrifices. But the Celts didn't think of death in the same way we do now. According to Caesar, the Celts believed in an immortal soul, and in reincarnation. So sacrificing someone for the good of the tribe, when that person's soul was eternal, was, well, perhaps more acceptable to them. The Romans, though, thought this practice was barbarous and shocking, and when they conquered Gaul, they outlawed the practice. Remember, however, how fond the Roman public was of watching gladiators murder each other and slaves be killed by lions in the Colosseum. 
Other than sacrifices, we have only one account of a specific druidic ceremony. Known as the Ritual of Oak and Mistletoe, it involved a druid cutting a sprig of mistletoe off an oak tree after two white bulls had been sacrificed. The druid would then make an elixir from the mistletoe that was supposed to cure any ailment. This ritual is found in Pliny the Elder's Natural History, so we don't know precisely how accurate the account is. Still, it has become an important image of druidism in the modern world. The end of druidism came relatively quickly, first with the Roman invasion of Gaul, and later Britain, where the suppression of druidic beliefs started under Emperor Augustus in 27 AD. The Germanic migration into France and England started in the 5th century also supplanted many Celtic beliefs. The last stronghold of the Druids was Ireland, but the Druids and their pagan beliefs didn't survive once Christianity got to the island. Interestingly though, the Vates, who were called Fili in Ireland, continued into the 1700s as poets and storytellers. They were the keepers of Irish folklore, and were held in high esteem as satirists. Their influence slowly died out starting with the Anglo-Norman invasion of Ireland in the late 12th century, and ending in the Renaissance. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks again to Babbel for supporting the channel. Click the link in the description to get 65% off. Also, if you're interested in supporting the channel financially, please consider checking out my Patreon. It only just launched, and I'll be making an official announcement in the coming weeks, but if you want to be one of my first patrons, click the link below. Thanks. Bye!